Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, you asked for it, and I'm going to build a plasma flame generator. Well, hopefully. I have no idea if this is even good. I don't know, it's been a while, I, you know, as I'm trying to source all the different parts and stuff. Obviously, this isn't everything. There's still a couple of parts to add, but got most of the stuff. Although one thing we are going to need is a MOSFET. Let's see, have I got any 260s? Yep. Okay, so I've drawn out the schematic just very roughly so I know what to do here. So the only thing we're missing is a 10k potentiometer, which, um, well, I've got plenty of those. See, a high voltage 100 picofarad capacitor, and that's something I don't have, but I think in place of this 100 picofarad capacitor, I'm going to use one of these. Or maybe one of these. See which one works better. Just hope we don't get arcing between the plates. So I'll put that in, so the only other thing that I'm missing is a big ass 10 microfarad capacitor and I'll worry about that later so basically got everything here for the uh, plasma flame generator so this is our primary this is our output coil this is our inductor and the various other components before I get to wiring this up though you might be asking yourself you know why am I using one of these why am I not using you know the specified capacitor in the schematic. Well, I've got an idea that if I use one of these, I should have some control over the tuning without having to arse around with the primary. I just hope I don't get any arcing between the plates because that is really gonna ruin my day if that happens, but we'll see. If that happens, I'll try to make a capacitor, but don't hold your breath. No idea if that's even gonna work. Before I get to wiring this thing, I just want to talk about something. So this is Cool Dude Clem here, interrupting the flow of the video to talk about something, which apparently is something all the cool YouTubers are doing, so um, I guess this makes me cool now. And the thing I want to talk about is why there haven't been very many videos lately. Now I know I said I was going to build a plasma flame generator, and that was like uh, weeks ago. The thing is sourcing the parts for the things, you know, sourcing the parts for my projects is kind of, well, it's just getting harder and harder to do. And also, there's that, and there's my neighbour, who, as you probably know, I live next door to one of the worst neighbours imaginable, so I have to try to find a quiet time to record the video, which, you know, is like maybe 30 minutes or so of quietness, then it starts again. He might even start while I'm doing this part. It wouldn't be so bad if he actually played something decent, but, you know, it's the same song again and again and again and again and again. It's only made up of one note, maybe two notes at the most. And it's all bass, you know, there's no, nothing else in it. And it drives me insane. We have done everything to get him to shut up. Tried speaking nicely. We've tried blasting our own music back at him. We've tried banging on the walls, getting in contact with the council and stuff. Nothing's worked. So, yeah, I am slowly going insane. I can actually feel it. I don't know how long it's going to be before I won't be able to do videos anymore. Because of how insane it's driving me. But yeah, back to the video. Okay, so here it is, all built. Now, I've had to make just a few minor changes to this because I didn't have the exact components, but I think what I've used is going to work. So, first off, we have the main inductor. Now, in the schematic it says 17 turns around a 1.5 centimeter core, but that didn't give me the 10 microhenries that I was supposed to get, so I wound a completely different core, which, I mean, different coil, which gives me the 10 microhenries. This is our input capacitor. Again, I don't have a huge 10 microfarad capacitor, so what I did I used a 180 microfarad capacitor. I don't really think that's going to make any difference. And I've tapped on a 
help if I was actually pointing it in the in the shot. Uh, one microfarad capacitor on the top of that to deal with the high frequencies. Everything else is pretty much to the schematic. Except for these two one kilo ohm resistors here. I don't have any two watt one kilo ohm resistors, so I made my own. Also, don't have a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, so yep, improvised again there. And I don't have a TVS diode, so I've just put two Zeners back to back, which is going to work just as good. Also, I don't have a high voltage 100 picofarad capacitor, so again, I've improvised and I've used a variable capacitor, which I have set to 100 picofarads. And also, I should have, like I said before, I should have some control over the tuning of this circuit. Okay, so, it's about time we tested this thing and see if it does anything. So, first off, I'm just going to power this off a little 9 volt battery. It probably won't even do anything, but, you know, we'll see. And to see that this thing is actually doing anything, stick an old compact fluorescent light in there and see if we get any response from it. Okay, plugging in the battery. Mm, nothing yet. I'm going to turn up the bias to its fullest. Mm, still nothing. Right, let's see if we get any response with two 9 volt batteries. Oh, still not getting anything. Okay, good news. I've got this circuit to oscillate. So, the only reason was that I had my bias turned up a bit too high. I call this the bias, I don't really know what it's supposed to be called. So, if I have it set halfway, as you can see, we don't really get much of anything, but let's turn the bias down a little bit. And there we go. We have oscillation at about 8.2 megahertz. So, we're well in the ballpark now. I'm not going to subject those batteries to much more of this torture, but um, yeah. Still not having any response from the CFL, but I think that will all change when we use a much more powerful supply than what a couple of 9 volt batteries can provide, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I've made a few little changes. First change you might notice is I've changed the inductor. So instead of using this tiddly little thing, which is pretty much the same specifications as um, the original schematic, I just don't think that's going to be able to handle the current, so I've made a much bigger coil. It sure isn't pretty, but made sure it's still the full 10 microhenries. And even with this bigger coil, I still have to have more than 17 turns. I think there's something more like 25 turns, something like that. Yeah, but I measured it and made sure it was 10 microhenry. Next thing is this rectifier here, with capacitors across it to protect each diode from the RF, which I can then power from this transformer over here. So I'll power this up and hopefully we'll get some results. Okay, so I'm going to connect up the transformer. I'm going to connect it up to the 14 volt output. I'm going to turn the bias up until the circuit starts oscillating. Okay, yep, yeah, we right, we have oscillation. Let's see if that responds. I did see a little bit of response out of the CFL. Let's turn the light out so you can see that. That's nice, yeah. CFL is responding to that, so that's good. So, I think the next thing to do is connect up our output um, coil. 
Let's see if we get any response out of this. But first, I want to measure the voltage between the drain and the source. And I just remembered. I haven't clipped my little microphone on. Okay, now, I'm going to measure between collector and emitter. I, I don't mean collector and emitter. I mean drain and source. See what the voltage is. I've got my scope on 10x attenuation. And I've got my scope on 20 volts peak to peak. So nothing should blow the scope. Is that really just how much voltage we're getting? It's just a puny little amount of voltage there. Okay, well, I've now connected up the output coil, as you can see. And we are getting outputs. I've mucked about with the variable capacitor to try to get the output as good as it is. Now, it's not doing anything spectacular at the moment, so... Don't expect, like impressive flames or anything because well you're gonna be a bit disappointed if I just connect up the power here see we do get a little bit of output there a little bit of breakout trouble is according to the scope that's only about 3.8 megahertz so I think I've made some cock up with this coil let's see what happens if I put this inside yeah, the coil, so it's not a base-fed coil anymore. No, it doesn't appear to like that. I've probably got this in the wrong way around. I might have to reverse this coil, which I'm going to do right now, hopefully. Right. Okay, so... Yeah, that's uh, doing its thing. Although, at this current time of recording, it's working just as good as a base fed coil, so... Next thing that I'm gonna do, um, it's gonna be in the next video. In fact, I'm actually quite impressed with this so far. I didn't even expect this to do anything. So, the fact that it's actually doing something, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Um, this video is probably getting very long already, so in the next part, I'm going to go into trying to make a better coil. Get this thing tuned to 10 megahertz, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so before I wrap this up for today, I thought I'd do just a couple of little experiments. Now, I want to know what the actual resonant frequency of this coil is. So, got the old Nombrex out. It's a frequency generator, RF frequency generator. Because the output of this is very low, it's like... 0.1 volts and a very simple little transistor amplifier here if the camera will focus on it there we go for those of you who want to see the schematic of that well there we go and I've got the oscilloscope set up to measure the output from our coil okay then we're about ready to start so what I want to do is I'm gonna go up and down in frequency and I'm gonna look for a point where this waveform completely collapses and where that waveform completely collapses, that is the resonant frequency of the coil. I will also add that the output of this frequency generator isn't exactly clean because whoever repaired this didn't use the right transistors. So, yeah. So, I'm going to start going up in frequency. Let's see what happens. The waveform is getting a little bit smaller. About 2.2 megahertz now. 2.8, 3 megahertz. Oh, what have we got right here? Now that looks interesting. So right about here, let me just turn the output down a little. Yeah, now that could be the resonant frequency of our coil. Okay, I'm going to go to the next band and just wind this all the way back. Okay, so where are we now? 4.4 megahertz. Let's see if anything interesting happens a little further on. Nothing much. Oh, it says. Look at that, right about here. Let's just 
bring that up a bit. It's wiggling around a bit. See if I can get that right on where it collapses. Now, according to the scope, that's 10 megahertz, but I don't think that's quite right, so I'm just going to take out the coil to see what frequency you actually have. And that's about 7.7 .7 megahertz. So yeah, that coil is way out. Okay, plugging the coil back in. So yeah, above that 7 point whatever megahertz, you can see we've got a very strong waveform. And below that 7 point whatever megahertz, we've got a very strong waveform. But right where, right where its resonant frequency is, yeah. Right, so I'm now going to attach this little screw. I'm going to attach that onto the end of the coil. Like so. You can see now the amplitude has increased, so the resonant frequency should be just a little bit lower now. So I'm turning the frequency back, and yeah, there it is. Okay, unplug the coil again. 7.6 megahertz. I don't know what the previous one was, but it was a little bit higher than that. And plug the coil back in, and as you can see, we have our results. So yeah, I'm going to have to do a few adjustments to this coil if I want it to be at 10 megahertz. I'm going to have to take a few windings off. And the other thing I wanted to do was see if I can get this running at 10 megahertz. So. In this bottle here, I've just got a wire going to the scope. The bolt's there just to hold it in place. So that's acting as an antenna, so the scope can pick up any output from this thing. And I'm also running this on batteries, just for safety reasons. So, I'll touch our two little 9 volt batteries, see if we get anything. And indeed we do. Right, I'm just going to clip that on there if I can. Right, let's see if we can get... 10 megahertz out of this and yeah we can right about there 10 megahertz so i think that's it for this video so next thing i gotta do make a better coil and we'll see what that gives us but that's gonna be in another video because i'm sure i've wasted enough time already so until next time goodbye